Uh, Brother Bear. I've never seen this movie. I, I've owned it for like a year. It's got a whole bunch of dust on it. <sighs> what the fuck is that? Hang on. I think I see a spider. I'm gonna kill it. That video was almost a decade ago. Hey there guys, how are you? Welcome to the final last time I will ever do a DVD collection video. I think it's time to finally move on and let go of the 720p optical discs that I've loved for many, many years. But unfortunately, I don't really watch any of these anymore. I either watch them on 4K or Blu-ray. And by the way, if you haven't watched my 4K movie collection video, I made it a few weeks ago. Go check that out, link down below. But more or less, these have just been props and videos for many years. I have not watched a DVD in probably five years. So I think it's time to let go. Now, I will keep maybe 10% of these because some of these movies do not exist on Blu-ray. You can't find them on Blu-ray. So there are some movies in here I will keep, but like 90 something percent of them, I'm probably going to sell. With all that said, wipe the tears away, go grab the popcorn, something cold to drink, and uh, yeah, we'll start talking about DVDs. And very quickly, before we do that, I have a question for you. Have you ever woken up on a cold, dark morning to find out that you're all out of coffee? <laughs> With Trade, that'll never happen again. Trade conveniently delivers coffee to your door. And big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video. Ah, just smelling it makes me feel better about my life. The cool thing about Trade is you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters. Trade matches you to your personal selection of coffee and delivers it to your door. You don't even need to leave the house. It's really easy, this is how it works. Step one, take the quiz, tell Trade how you like your coffee, and they'll curate matches just for you. Step two, to your door, choose your delivery frequency, and it'll magically, poof, appear at your doorstep. Step three, rate and repeat, rate your matches so Trade can continue to delight you with coffee that you love. Uh, that's what makes videos possible late at night and in the morning. Without it, I wouldn't be here right now. The first 100 viewers who click the link down below get 30% off their first bag when they sign up. Free shipping included. Check it out. That's how I'm going to make it through this video. That's what's going to keep me alive. All right, so no cuts, no edits. I'm just gonna do this. Raw, visceral entertainment from me to you. Get ready, all right. Uh, the first one is The Long Kiss Goodnight. Gina Davis, Samuel L. Jackson, a phenomenal underrated action film written by Shane Black, I believe. Uh, the Simpsons movie. I loved The Simpsons in the 90s. After that, it sort of went to crap. And this movie's like, eh, it's, it's okay. It's instantly forgettable. Uh, the Crow. Uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I actually just watched this on uh, Amazon. I watched it somewhere. HBO Max. Uh, I really prefer Excellent Adventure after watching Bogus Journey again. It's just Excellent Adventure is so much more fun. Uh, Joyride, another little underrated film. I really enjoy that. One of Paul Walker's better movies, in my opinion. Candy Cane. Oh, hey, Rusty Nail. Just good times. Uh, Cinderella on uh, DVD. Halloween unrated director's cut. Doesn't really make the movie any better. Uh, <laughs> Friday the 13th, Killer Cut. Michael Bay produced movie. Sleepy Hollow. I really enjoyed this. This was sort of one of my favorite Tim Burton movies. Uh, the Bourne Ultimatum. Uh, Finding Nemo. I own that on Blu-ray now. Uh, the Mulan 1 and 2. This is kind of a rare thing, or at least when I found it, it was. Uh, both movies. Uh, and I've never watched Mulan 2. Philadelphia. Sort of a depressing movie, but I really enjoy it. Uh, the Boondock Saints, All Saints Day Long. I'll probably never watch this again. It's on Steelbook, though. It's a Steelbook. Uh, Knocked Up. Ending in the Cover. I've always enjoyed this movie. I remember reading the book as a kid, uh, and I always thought if, if the studio could have afforded more rights to more toys, Omri would have opened up that cupboard and had way more fun than he did. I mean, yeah, they had Robocop, they had an Indian, they had a few other things, but... I wish they could have afforded the rights to like G.I. Joe and, and Ninja Turtles. That would have made, made the movie that much better, but I've always really enjoyed it. The Sword in the Stone, probably one of my favorite classic Disney animated films, and I cannot wait for the live action adaptation by Disney. It'll probably suck, like many of their live, a live action adaptations do, but nevertheless. Friday the 13th, part two. Uh, Small Soldiers, always en enjoyed Small Soldiers. Uh, the Outsiders, hey Pony Boy, oh hey Dally, uh, Soda Pop. I like. I wish I could have been a greaser in the 1950s so I, someone could have called me Soda Pop. That would have been amazing. Uh, Superman, the five film collection. I don't think I've watched any of these DVDs. I have seen the Superman movies. Uh, I sort of secretly enjoy this, the Richard Pryor one. Uh, Lady and the Tramp, Uncle Buck, probably one of my favorite John Candy movies. 
Uh, the Jungle Book, by the way, I bought this on eBay back in probably like 2010, and I think it's a fake bootleg copy, and I even messaged the seller after he sold it to me, because if you look at the discs, it looks like, it, it looks fake, it doesn't look correct, so... Uh, he ended up giving, giving me that fake DVD for free, I believe. Uh, Little Monsters, a truly underrated film with Fred Savage. Highly recommend watching this. Uh, and that's uh, Howie Mandel right there. Um, hey, Bry, check this out! And he eats his boogers. I like it. Uh, Summer Story, the sequel to A Christmas Story. Not as good. It, uh, let me tell you how old this shit is. Look at this. Look at that. It's a clipper case, man. Clipper cases. I still have a clipper case. Uh, and honest, you know, the other thing about DVDs, some of these movies, it's nice to own it on DVD because it's not quite worth upgrading to Blu-ray. Like, some of these you would never need on Blu-ray. But having it on DVD, it's like, oh, I have it. I'll never watch it. But having it makes me feel better about who I am and what I'm doing in life. Uh, Mighty Ducks 2, I actually prefer this over the first movie. I've always just enjoyed it. I just think this movie has way more fun than the uh, the first movie. Uh, the Thing, uh, Pretty Woman, um, <laughs> richer or for richer or for poorer, Layer Cake, a nice underrated Matthew Vaughn flick, Happy Gilmore, the ball goes in the hole, uh, Drill Bit Taylor. <laughs> I'm not a pervert. I just wanted a Turbo Man doll. He got two. I love. Jingle All The Way, probably my favorite guilty pleasure movie of all time. Uh, Fistful of Dollars, I really enjoy the uh, Man With No Name trilogy. My Girl, I don't care who you are or how tough you think you are, when, spoilers, little Macaulay Culkin dies from bee stings, I tear up. I cry like a little bitch when I watch this movie. Hustle and Flow is a pig's, yeah, you guys know the quote. I've always loved Hustle and Flow. I can I rewatch this movie over and over. I, I've always enjoyed it. Uh, Bicentennial Man, a movie that no one talks about, and you probably should. It's where Robin Williams essentially starts out as a robot and ends as a human being. I think it's a really fascinating story, and it's it's always been like one of those movies I enjoy. I like movies that take place over sort of like a lifetime in a futuristic setting. Something about it just makes you think about your own mortality in a way. So Bicentennial Man. Uh, World's Greatest Dad. This is a pretty vulgar movie and it's it's pretty dark at times and uh, yeah there's sort of like a subplot with his son in this movie that directly relates with what happened to Robin Williams later on which is just coincidental but either way I uh, fun movie. Angels in the Outfield. I remember watching this over and over on VHS as a kid. Uh, Beetlejuice. Hey, come here, hey, hey, come here. <laughs> That's my Beetlejuice impression. License to Drive. Listen, I, I'm a huge fan of Corey Feldman and Corey Haim, and I think this is probably their best movie ever together. Uh, for a while, this DVD was out of print, and it was very expensive, and then it came out on Blu-ray, and I think they made more copies. Uh, so now it's not worth what it was, but I remember at one time this was worth like $90. Um... But it's on Blu-ray now. I should probably upgrade it at some point. Uh, people always ask me when I do Blu-ray collection videos, John, you don't have the Godfather movies on Blu-ray? No. I, the majority of random movies that I probably don't rewatch all the time, like the Godfather movies, I have on DVD. Uh, and here they are. This is like a really old case. Uh, risky Business. I've always been a huge fan of Risky Business. I've, I've always sort of related to Tom Cruise's character in Risky Business. And then sometimes when I'm alone, I dance around in my underwear. Uh, Chucky, the killer DVD collection. Uh, Somewhere, rent Somewhere Rental, a uh, very overlooked John Candy movie. Uh, Escape from Alcatraz. Uh, Pinocchio. Uh, Resident Evil Ex Extinction. Like, I don't need that shit. Uh, Shrek, probably my favorite DreamWorks animated movie ever. Slumdog Millionaire. This was like, this is one of those movies where everyone talked about it when it came out and no one ever talked about it again. And I, I liked it. I'll just never watch it again. Uh, Overboard, guilty pleasure from the 80s. Uh, Out of Sight, good movie. One time watch, probably won't ever watch it again. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh yes, please. Now this, like some of these movies, see this is like one DVD I, I might keep. But then again, I want to kind of get the Blu-ray. Is the Blu-ray of Bill and Ted out? Or is, I, I, if it's not out, it's definitely going to come out uh, when the new movie does. 
Uh, nine, see, I'll never watch that again. Tall Tale, uh, another overlooked movie. Is this on Blu-ray? Probably not, with uh, Patrick Swayze in it. Uh, Aristocats, I think I've watched this once in my life. Not one of my favorite animated flicks. Uh, Fifel, uh, Balto, and The Land Before Time. Uh, all my Happy Place movies from a child, uh, especially Fifel, American Tale, and Land B Before Time. Uh, Three Kings, ooh. Three Kings, uh, this is an old ass clipper case, and as much as I like this movie, would I watch it again? Probably, like, I can't ever imagine grabbing the clipper case DVD of Three Kings and putting that in. It's probably in full screen, too. Uh, the Little Mermaid, uh, The 25th Hour, Mary Poppins, a Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, 48 Hours, Twister, I feel like I own this on Blu-ray. Maybe I do. Uh, Ants, Superman Returns, The Steelbook, uh, American Wedding, ah, Coneheads. At one time, this was really hard to find too. I believe this was out of print for a while and then it came back. Uh, Fright Night, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, a Christmas story. If you have cable, you'll never have to buy this movie because they play it for like three days straight around Christmas time. And when else are you going to watch this movie? Are you gonna watch this in the summertime? Why would you watch a Christmas story in the summertime? You'd be utterly insane if you did that. Uh, Treasure Planet, some people like this movie. I couldn't quite get into it. Men in Black, I should probably just buy this on Blu-ray. Uh, for a few more dollars, another one of the uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, Man With No Name movies. Nightmare Before Christmas. Dumb and Dumber, I have this on Blu-ray, so I don't need that. Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Uh, the Hellboy, is this the Hellboy director's cut? Yeah. Explorers, uh, Child's Play, but I don't think I need this because I have the collection of all the Chucky films, and so, yeah, no reason to have that. Two for the money. Hoo-ha, motherfucker. How about I give you a pack of bubblegum and show you how to chew it? Uh, great Al Pacino movie with Matthew McConaughey. Definitely an overlooked movie. I enjoy this. Uh, it's about gambling and betting, and it's really intense and a lot of fun to watch. All right, let's get dark and weird for a while. Uh, let me get the mic going here so you guys can hear me a little better. Ah, there we go. All right, yeah, I have my shotgun mic above the... Uh... Anyway, River's Edge, a movie that no one talks about, I don't think anyone knows about. It's a it's an early Keanu Reeves film, and it's just like this dark, weird, bizarre, seedy movie. Uh, and speaking of all that, Bully. If you want to watch one of the dirtiest movies that'll make you want to wash your hands after you watch it, based on a true story, go watch Bully. It's it's based on a true story. It's it's an it's intense shit. Uh, Frozen, uh, the Goofy movie. Oh, hi there, Maxie. That's my impression. Unbreakable, which I think I own, I own the Blu-ray. I own the Blu-ray. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three, uh, and then you have Friday. <laughs> Two very different movies. Uh, one of my favorite films. I remember watching this over and over in elementary school because that was like the cool movie everyone watched. Uh, Boiler Room, another film I really have always enjoyed that no one really talks about. I love films about like scams and and, and white collar crimes and criminals and this deals with the stock market. Uh, Chasing Amy. Uh, <laughs> Okay, let me explain, let me explain. This is called Bullets, Bombs, and Babes. This was sent to me in a uh, fan mail unboxing video, and I, it's still in the plastic, I haven't watched it. I wanted to do a review of it, but the time just never felt right. Uh, Hercules, Bad Boys 2, I'll probably never watch that again. Uh, this Means War, why do I own that? Uh, the Tear Theory, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the reboot, I liked this reboot. I thought it was I thought it was good. I thought if you're going to reboot a horror film, this movie did a pretty good job of it. I didn't have a lot of complaints. I've always sort of enjoyed it. Uh, oh, brother, where are, where, are, where are thou? God, I cannot talk today. Uh, this was, uh, on, from a technical standpoint, and a flick fact for you guys, this was the first film to ever use digital color grading. And that's that's pretty cool. All right, the next one is The Pianist. Uh, one of my favorite uh, time period Holocaust films. It's just so intense. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. It's just <sighs> dark times. Uh, American Pie 2, Triple X, The Page Master. Uh, 
The Legend of Bagger Vance, uh, The Mighty Ducks, I love Emilio Estevez, uh, Halloween 2, Blade 2, uh, The Great Outdoors, another one of my favorite John Candy movies. You, there's not really many bad John Candy movies, uh, but yeah, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, uh, Baby Boy, this is also, th I, this movie's highly rewatchable to me. Um, the uh, Wes Craven, the horror collection. This has a, uh, this has Shocker and People Under the Stairs. That's why I bought it. Okay, yeah, People Under the Stairs is one of the weirdest, most bizarre movies of all time. But Shocker, it's finger looking good. It's just like, gosh, they just don't make movies like that anymore. Look who's talking. I always remember, I, I remember growing up watching this movie, and always thinking, wow, do babies think like, do babies in their head sound like John Travolta, or Bruce Willis? Maybe I don't know. Uh, Wizard of Oz. I actually own this on 4K. No reason to keep the DVD. Uh, Bolt, voiced by John Travolta. I'm never, ever watching that again. Uh, some kind of wonderful, uh, kind of an overlooked uh, John Hughes 80s flick. What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Hey, Arnie! Really great film. I, I See, once again, this is one of those other movies where it's kind of just like the human element that's what i love about it just like it's pure it's it's not fantastical it's it just feels like a real family in some small town living their life uh sling blade mm, taters uh we just talked about that movie tonight on the live stream american beauty and the virgin suicides both pretty depressing movies with like a murder aspect in it um like, but I'm never, am I ever going to watch The Virgin Suicides again? Like, I just can't imagine putting that DVD in ever again. I uh, never back down. Sort of always one of those random movies that it's not very good, but you sort of just like, you're entertained by it. Uh, Legally Blonde, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Drop Dead Fred. Now, this was also out of print for a while. Uh, uh, Sophie, uh, I always first, uh, it's not Sophie, Phoebe Cates who was like the most amazing thing in, uh, I forget the movie. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, the pool scene, you guys know what I'm talking about. But she has an imaginary friend when she's a kid and it's it's Fred and this was out of print, it was worth a lot of money and once again, they made more of it and uh, now it's worth like probably a dollar. Uh, Aladdin, King of Thieves, uh, the other Aladdin flick, Aladdin Return of Jafar. Uh, this might quite possibly be one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies ever made, it's Trading Places. Highly recommend it. Uh, I have a lot of 80s movies, and the 80s for me were like, that's like my strong suit. Like, I grew up watching 80s movies, even though I was born in 87, so I watched a lot of HBO as a kid, and they always had 80s movies. Uh, Clueless, I think I own this, or did I get rid of the blue? I don't remember. Uh, Black Hawk Down. Uh, Disturbia, I've sort of always enjoyed this movie as well. I like movies that take place in one location, but for me, Disturbia is one of those movies where I like the first half, and then once the, the mystery starts being unsolved or solved, I don't really enjoy it as much. Uh, Vegas Vacation. Every time I go to Vegas, I've been there two times in the last year just because of YouTube stuff, and uh, I always like, this is the movie I always like think about when I go to Vegas. Uh, Blade. Uh, Bad or Santa. I love that film. Uh, Born Identity. I love you, Philip Morris. Uh, another Jim Carrey, this is a Jim Carrey movie that's, to me, is really funny, and most people, I, most people don't like this movie as much as I do, but I've, I sort of enjoyed this movie, and once again, it's a movie about a con man, um, so I think that's the element I re really enjoy. Last of the Mohicans, Daniel Day-Lewis, I remember looking for this movie for years, like, because most of these DVDs I accumulated by going to pawn shops and finding them for like a dollar or two dollars. Uh, so I always remember like having a list of movies I wanted to find and this was on it for like two years and I finally found it and I was like, oh, this is awesome and because I've heard so many good things about it and I watched it and I was like, it's a, it's a good movie, but I'd rather watch like Braveheart or Gladiator, but um, I, I just don't think I'd watch it again. Wayne's World, a movie that I deeply relate to and here's why. You have Wayne Campbell. He's making videos in his parents' basement and putting them on public access. Sort of reminds me of how I got started on YouTube. I was in my parents' basement making videos for YouTube. So it's so relatable, and I, I enjoy both these movies. I would buy this on Blu-ray. Uh, Jack, 
Uh, I like this movie. I think the DVD though is scratched to uh, scratched to shit. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think it's watchable. Um, Grandma's Boy, a fun movie. Not the best movie, but it's it has like a video game subplot to it. I I think it's fun. Uh, the Goonies, National Treasure, uh, Bad Lieutenant, the original with Harvey Keitel. I prefer the uh, Nick Cage version. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, Vacation, Coming to America, Old Boy, probably... I, I would say right beside Parasite, this is my favorite foreign film of all time. And it's another South Korean flick, but Old Boy, man, that movie... That blew me away when I watched it. Ah, let's get comfortable. Let's get comfortable. All right. Uh, next up is Rules of Attraction. This, I believe, was... Uh, the novel was written by the same uh, same guy who wrote American Psycho. That's what really motivated me to watch Rules of Attraction with James Vanderbeek. You guys remember James Vanderbeek, don't you? Uh, and I like this movie a lot. I think you guys should... I highly recommend, if you like movies like, like um, American Psycho... This is a little bit lighter, definitely less killing, but still sort of that dark, weird humor with internal thoughts and, and narrative, or and like narration from a character. So, yeah, give that movie a watch. Uh, Half Bait, Dennis the Menace, uh, Blade Trinity. Uh, I remember watching this in theaters back in like, oh, what is it, oh, four, oh, four, oh, five. Uh, but I remember going to see this in theaters three times. Not because it was like that great. I just remember I went to see it with one person and then another person wanted to see it and I was like, I'll go watch it again. Uh, Rambo 3, not, I don't like Rambo 3. Uh, Van Wilder and Maid. I always sort of enjoyed Van Wilder. Went back to rewatch it. Doesn't doesn't quite stand the test of time. J uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. Most people say this is the worst Friday the 13th movie ever made and I don't disagree with you because 90% of the movie actually takes place on a boat and not in Manhattan. Uh, but the part where Jason does go to Manhattan, I sort of enjoy as a guilty pleasure. Like, he punches a dude's head off, it goes into the gutter, and then it falls into a dumpster. There's just some fun, stupid moments in the movie. Uh, the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter. Another Harry Potter movie. Uh, <laughs> the the first Hulk movie. Yeah. Uh, the Truman Show. I'm sure... Everyone, I'm sh If you watch The Truman Show, just for, like, a brief moment... Did you secretly think your life was a TV show? Just for a second, be honest. Uh, the Butterfly Effect, uh, Rambo Part Two, Young Guns, it's another guilty pleasure like Western music. I like the sound. I like like the the score to it. It's like it's such like an '80s Western movie, uh, but still a really good time. The Regulators, uh, Bandits, uh, ATL, Eight Millimeter. What did you get you off or something? Uh, this is a seedy, dark movie. Really seedy and dark, but a really good movie. And just one of those movies I feel like you should watch because things like this actually exist in society. And it's just like, kind of makes you feel icky inside. All right. Uh, where should we go? Let's, let's start here. Oh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, collection. It has twins, kindergarten cop, and junior. <laughs> That's, I like all of those except for junior. Uh, Kindergarten Cop is phenomenal. And Twins, I grew up watching Twins over and over. Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger. And basically, uh, the, the plot is they try to engineer the perfect child in a sperm milkshake. That's the plot of the movie. And then one came out to be Danny DeVito and the other was Arnold. So it's like you had this perfect specimen and then you had Danny DeVito. Fly to the Navigator. Hey, Davey! Terrible impression. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, The Labyrinth. Aladdin, which I own on Blu-ray. The Mask, Jim Carrey, Maximum Overdrive. I have a lot of, uh... Ooh, can you guys hear me? Let's, let me fix this mic, okay. I have a lot of, uh, Emilio Estevez movies. Here, let me fix this thing. There we go. Uh, Three Ninjas. I, I loved this movie. This movie always made me want to, like, eat pizza and then, I don't know, learn, like, Karate or whatever, and I don't know. I always wanted to be Colt. Uh, liar, Liar. Hot Fuzz. I love it because there's a lot of Point Break references. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Catch Me If You Can. This might be one of my favorite Spielberg movies uh, post the two th in, in the 2000s. I, once again, I love criminal con man uh, movies. 
uh, Clerks, a movie that speaks to me because it's just, it's basically a movie about nothing. And sometimes those are my favorite types of movies. They're just relaxing to watch. Uh, just one of the guys. We talked about this a few times on my uh, Patreon exclusive podcast. And uh, this is like, this is a girl who doesn't get respected. So she pretends to be a boy, goes to another school, school so she can get like a great position writing for the school newspaper. I could see that happening nowadays. I could just see this being like a real story. Uh, so definitely a fun 80s flick. Uh, Detroit Rock City. I love this movie. I always have. Uh, it's like a, a fun road trip stoner movie uh, d d with Edward uh, Furlong in it. Uh, Friday the 13th, which I just got on Blu-ray. Uh, the Wedding Singer. Uh, Office Space. Another movie. If you've ever worked in a cubicle, because for a few years I did. I hated every day of my life. And uh, I, I took the advice of this movie. I didn't quit my job. I just I just stopped going. <laughs> uh, Street Sharks. I always loved the animated series on TV. And I always thought to myself, like, this is pretty much like a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles knockoff. But would you rather be a turtle or a shark with rollerblades? I'd rather be the shark. Uh, the Santa Claus. Remember seeing this in theaters as a kid. RoboCop 2. Uh, First Blood. Rescue as Down Under, great Disney movie. Um, Huck and Finn and Tom and Huck. There was something weird going on in the early '90s over at Disney. They like they couldn't stop making Huckleberry Finn movies. Uh, Bad Boys, not the Martin Lawrence movie, but this is the original Sean Penn movie, and this is a great like gritty. I think this is early '80s uh, movie where he goes to like a, a boys' school. Really cool movie. Uh, Basketball, Richie Rich, uh, From Hell, uh, Problem Child. I always like this is another one of those movies I watched on repeat growing up over and over again. Both Problem Child movies. I might see this is like one I need to keep. Uh, adaptation, watched it once, really enjoyed it. Will I watch it again? Probably not. Blues Brothers, uh, Cool Runnings, another uh, John Candy movie. Mighty Ducks D3, by far my least favorite. Airheads. No one talks about Airheads. Uh, Green Mile. Oh, Tremors. This is like the perfect B movie of all time. Uh, oh, okay. I've said this many times. When I talk about comedy movies that are underrated, no one talks about, but everyone should watch. And I believe this was being rumored to be remade, which of course every movie is going to be remade, uh, is Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. The title says it all. The Babysitter's Dead. It, she dies. Uh, but it's just like a fun summertime movie. Uh, always really, like this is another movie I always, um, I, I, so for some odd reason I wish I was one of those kids in that movie when I was, when I was a kid. Uh, 40 Year Old Virgin, Daredevil. Uh, see, some of these are so bad you just have to keep them. You just, you have to keep them. Uh, don't fall. Uh, Tommy Boy, I have this on Blu-ray now, so no reason to keep that. UHF. <laughs> Uh, road Trip. I always enjoyed Road Trip. I like, I just like Road Trip movies in general. I think they're so fun. Uh, Dances with Wolves. Probably will never watch this again. Uh, Pineapple Express. Blank Check. Another movie. If you were a kid and you watched this, you always were hoping when you're riding your bicycle, some guy would back out, run over your bike, write you a blank check, and then you were instantly a millionaire. Except when you grow up, you learn that that's check fraud and that's illegal. Unfortunately, um, Mario brother. Oh God. You know, what's weird. I remember watching the Mario super Mario brothers in theaters as a kid and just thinking like, I like the game. What the hell is this? Uh, Jane silent Bob strike back and see no man. See, I have a lot of like guilty pleasure, fun movies. Uh, weasel, uh, Robocop. I have this on Blu-ray, uh, trains, planes, and automobiles. I have, why, I have a whole bunch of uh, Emilio Estevez and John Candy movies. That's what I own on DVD. Orgasmo. Get the Orgasmo radar, Chodo boy. Definitely a crazy movie. Uh, Three Ninjas Kickback. Is this the second one? Yeah, the cool thing about this movie was they actually had ninja suits. I always wanted, like, the ninja suits in this movie. Uh, Adam's Family. Oh, The Three Musketeers. Oh, this is... Fun story. By the way, this is on Disney+. Plus. Go watch the, th the Three Musketeers if you like corny early 90s like 
movies. Um, I remember going to see this at the theater. Then after the movie was over, we were driving home and I started choking on some spree candies. I almost died. And uh, that's what I remember most about Three Musketeers. So in a way, this movie almost killed me. <clears throat> Rookie of the Year, Raising Arizona, uh, The Saint. My favorite part in this film is where he's in disguise and he goes, uh, so early, I want some coffee or something? <laughs> Kill Bill, Clerks 2. I liked Clerks 2 until it got to the donkey part of the movie and I was like, eh, it's not that funny. Escape from LA, one of the worst sequels ever made. Uh, the Born Supremacy, Untouchables, uh, Kingpin, a great comedy movie based on bowling, and this movie sort of inspired me and my friends to actually join a bowling league later on. Uh, Election, another very underrated film people should go watch. If you like comedy movies that aren't too rambunctious, definitely go watch this film. Uh, Bachelor Party, uh, Bad Boys, Something About Mary, Man of the House, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, uh, Beverly Hills Ninja, uh, True Lies on DVD. Hey, James Cameron, we're still waiting for the Blu-ray. Any day now. Uh, the Beavis and Butthead entire complete collection. Um, I don't think I've watched any of these DVDs. I liked Beavis and Butthead, but I just don't know when I would actually put in the DVD of Beavis and Butthead and, and watch it again. I don't. Uh, White Men Can't Jump. Uh, Punisher, I always enjoyed this movie. Uh, Radio Flyer, a great film, a really great inspirational film. Um, and it, and it, the way that you, the way this movie ends isn't actually what's happening in the film. It's like, oh, that's the best possible outcome, but that's not what really happens in the movie. And when you really think about what really does happen, it's really dark and depressing. Uh, but Radio Flyer, you, got, you guys got to watch that. Uh, Be Beverly Hills Cop. Jungle to Jungle. I'll never watch this again. Uh, honey, I Shrunk the Kids. One of my favorites. Uh, uh, can't buy, can't buy me love. See, I'm once again, I'm a sucker for like '80s comedies movies, and this is another one I always enjoyed. Essentially, this kid uh, pretty much buys his way into this this girl's life because she uses him for his money to buy a jacket that she ruins at a party. And then he gives her money to date him. It's just like... Uh, they'd probably never make a movie like that nowadays. Uh, Jumanji, uh, Dawn of the Dead, The che Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original Steelbook. Harsh Times. Hey, dog, you look you got little bitch feet or else I'll take your shoes. Uh, definitely an underrated Christian Bale movie. Uh, Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, the Girl Next Door, which in my opinion is sort of like... A modern day remake of Risky Business in some ways. Always really enjoyed this. Uh, the final chapter. He called the shit poop. Deep Impact. And the same year this came out, you had Armageddon. This was the, like the smart man's destruction movie compared to Armageddon. Always enjoyed that. And anytime you want to make Morgan Freeman the president of the United States, I'll watch it. Uh, <laughs> Monster Squad. Uh... Blank Man, J5, J5. <laughs> oh, Boogie Nights. Hey, Jack, I've been thinking a lot about my name, and every time I close my eyes, I see these bright, shiny neon letters, and they say Dirk Diggler. Great movie. Uh, American Pie, The Exorcist, a clipper case version of it. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I think I own this on Blu ray, but it's Weird Science, another great 80s movie. Uh, all right, guys, so that com concludes my entire DVD collection. This will be the last time I ever do a DVD collection video ever, ever on my channel or YouTube because I think I'm going to get rid of most of these movies. Uh, hopefully somebody wants them. I will keep a small selection of these, um, but I just, in all honesty, it's just like I, I don't need them. I have the Blu-rays. I have the 4K movies and any and any of these movies I truly love. Well, it gives me, gives me an excuse to upgrade them to Blu-ray to buy the same stuff once again, but I like doing it. It's what I do. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, it's, I almost, it's, it's almost going to bring a tear to my eye. 
Okay, well, <laughs> anyway, guys, leave your thoughts, your opinions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up because it does help that YouTube algorithm, and it does help the channel. Uh, but yeah, guys, just share your thoughts down below. Do you guys still keep your DVDs? Do you get rid of them? Uh, do, you, do you think I should sell these and just keep some of the movies I really love or enjoy? It's just, I don't know. I'm just trying to downsize a little bit, and uh, I figured I'd go out with one last hoorah, one big bang, and uh, I feel complete in life. And once again, big things to trade for sponsoring this video because without them, well, I couldn't make videos possible. So definitely check them out, link down below. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts, your opinions down below. Make sure you subscribe. That way I can see you next time. <laughs>